Are we happy to be in the house of God this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we are going to stand and just welcome his presence. Tell your brother on your left, on your right, and tell them you are at the right place this morning. You are at the right. You made the best choice, uh, not to be in bed, not to be whatsoever, but to be in the presence of God. Amen. 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 We are going to just take a moment and uh, and pray. Amen. We are going to pray. We are going to welcome his presence. We are going to ask him to have his way and to manifest as his glory. Because I don't know what you're after. Ah, for myself, I'm after that glory. Amen. So if I have to dwell in that glory, that way I will be. Because I just enjoy to be in his glory. Amen. Amen. We are going to raise up our voice and just say thank you. Thank you for your brother. Thank you for your sister that you see present. And thank you for those who are still coming, who are still on the road, coming here. Just raise up your voice and just thank him. Thank him. Yes, Lord. Father, we In the name of just want to say thank Jesus. you this morning. We, thank we you, just want to praise your name and worship you, so you Father God. Thank Father, you for your this love. is the best choice ever. Thank you for your presence. To be at your feet. Thank to you be for your, in your power. Presence, Yahweh. Thank you for your Father, amazing presence. Father, we just want to say presence, thank you. Father. Thank you for my brother Kobo that I see. Shai for my brother, my in sister the that name I of see. Jesus. And even those that I haven't seen yet. We thank oh, Father, you, Father, for still on the road you are fighting against you are here with Father us. God traffic you and love us so much. To come in your presence. Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence yes, Lord. here, Lord. Thank you in for Jesus. your presence. Yes, Father, that's going to be so Lord, we magnify your name, Father Lord, we glorify you. There's no God like Father, you, Jehovah. Thank you, we want, thank we you God, for you, blessing Father us. God, this morning. Thank you, we Jesus. We bless you, Father for being God. Our God. We bless you, Yahweh. Thank you, Father. Father we want to lift your name in the name high, of Father Jesus. God, for you are above all yes, Lord. names. Yes, Lord. You are above all in names. The name Father, Father Jesus. Jesus. is your name. We thank the you, name Jehovah. Above all, Father God. You have you loved us beyond measure. You have loved us beyond understanding. You are above our tribulations. You are above our Thank situations, you, our sicknesses and Thank diseases, you, Father. You are above. Thank you, Jesus. Because Thank you, you Jesus. carry the most high Hallelujah. God, the, Hallelujah. the most high name, the name of Jesus. Yes, because Lord. as you say in yes, your name, Father. Yes, in God. the name of Jesus, Thank you, the name every of Jesus. knee bow and every tongue confess life. that you are Lord. Father, we want to confess that you are Lord in, in this Jesus place. Name. We thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. We praise Hallelujah. you. We worship you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Hallelujah. Name. Whenever we say we have no sin, we take God for a liar. And we know that he's not a liar. He's not a son of man to lie or a man to lie or a son of man to repent. So he is so holy and we are not. Even though we are called to that holiness, but we are not holy. We fall short of that glory each time that we sin. Each time that our mind is corrupted. Each time that our words are not praising and worshipping him. Each time that we find ourselves in a situation where we fail to honor his name. We sin. So we are going to ask for that forgiveness. Tell him to forgive you. I will ask him to forgive me and forgive our homes, our household, our children, our husbands our wives because even though we can stand and say we are holy we don't know where they've been we don't know what they do we don't know what they watch on on their tvs and their any devices that they can carry we just don't know we just don't know let us just seek for that repentance that holiness so that he can make us holy and worthy to be in his presence this morning let us pray in jesus name father in the yes, name of jesus we come to you this jesus. morning we come the spirit of repentance we come before you because we are not worthy we are not worthy to even come in your presence forgive me jesus but father we call you our abba forgive me father we call you our abba father you say come as you are come as you are father 
your expectation you, is not for us alone. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Father
together. Zala nanga yemba, zala nanga Yahweh, zala nanga. the one in between he's everywhere he's with us the promises of God as he never leave us or forsake us he's a constant force he's a constant presence he's worthy to be praised because he's God days after day he show us that he is worthy our presence today is that he is where we are living testimony we don't have to stir up your worship in you we know that he is worthy to be praised and to be worshipped. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. That's why we are here, my Father. We here to worship you. Bow down and shift. Bow down and worship you. Yes, we bow down and worship. Bow down and worship you. Worship you. Oh, worship you. Bow down and worship you. the King of Kings. Jesus, the King of Kings. He is the King of Kings, Jesus. Jesus, the King of Kings. Worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Worship 
worshiping, worshiping.
Jesus. Oh. 
Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Keep singing, nothing compares. Nothing yes. compares to the promise. Nothing compares to the promises we have in you, Father. Nothing compares. Hallelujah. Praise God, we worship you, oh God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, people of God, I hope you're realizing how deep these words are. Nothing compares to the promise we have in Jesus. You know, Ephesians 3.20, I don't know if we have it. Ephesians 3 20 now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think nothing compares nothing the Bible doesn't say that the power that is at work within us you know that power is pretty much just spoken we can all promise but most of us will not even live up to that promise. So God does not only speak, but he is also able to act. Because that's what the Bible says. It's his ability to act on your life. His ability to act in my life. So when he promises you, he is able to follow up with an act. Somebody can come and promise us all in here a, a blessing. Say let's for example to make us happy everyone at the end you will live with a car who would not smile in this room yes but we will start following that person yes you promised you promised you promised we might even never see that promise come to pass but the ability that your god the ability that my god has to fulfill his promise to on his promise that's why we're singing this morning that's why we're shouting to him because we know that he's able he's able above and beyond what we ask above and beyond what you even think what you can even imagine so as you sing these words just realize that the way he's acting in your life it's above and beyond what you had asked even 20 years ago 10 years ago five years ago he's acting above and beyond what you asked he's acting above and beyond what you prayed for so let's sing this verse again nothing compares to the promise i have in you yes father Nothing compares, say. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Yes, we sing. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Oh, nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have. In Yes. 
réaliser ce que nous sommes en train de chanter. Je ne sais pas si réellement tu es en train de réaliser ce que nous sommes en train de chanter. I don't know if you're realizing, understanding nous sommes en train de chanter what we're singing, what as we're singing. Nous savons tous we know all. ce que un père fait pour ses enfants. We know all what a father does for their children. Nous tous nous savons qu'est-ce qu'un père représente. We all know what a father represents. Mais si Dieu a accepté que nous puissions l'appeler aussi comme un frère, and if God allowed us to be also called par le sang de Jésus, through the blood of Christ, alors je ne comprends pas comment est-ce que tu ne peux pas capter. So I don't understand how you cannot receive. Comment est-ce que Dieu, how God, devient ton frère? Is your friend. Comment est-ce que celui qui a créé l'univers, how the one who created the universe, il, il te permet, allows you, de le considérer, to consider him, comme son frère, as a brother, mais il est ton père, but he is your father, car ce que tes parents t'ont promis, what your parents promised to you, je peux te garantir à 100%, I can guarantee you 100%, que tout ce que tes parents t'ont promis, ils ne l'ont jamais réalisé à 100%. All your parents promised to you, mais quand Dieu, all of it, but like mais God, quand Dieu, but when God, quand Dieu te promet quelque chose, you something, il le réalise toujours. Yes, he realizes je sais qu'il y a always. des gens ici, I know that people in je sais qu'il y a des personnes ici, there are people in this room. je me rappelle, I remember, je crois en 2017, in 2017, 2017, 2018, 2017-2018. Si je ne vous dis pas qu'est-ce qui s'était passé, if I don't tell you what happened, vous allez croire que you would believe or think c'est c'est quelque chose d'ordinaire. Yes, you would think that it's just an ordinary thing. On a quelqu'un devant nous là. We have someone in front of us. Et la personne là, and that person, c'est notre sister Kesia. Yeah, it's our sister Kesia. Je sais qu'elle qu est étonnée présentement. Yeah, I know that she's surprised right now that she's been called out. Ses parents et sa famille savent que. Yes, her parents and family know that. Si ce n'était pas Dieu, if it wasn't God, il y a, elles étaient dans une voiture. They were in a car. Et tout d'un coup, and suddenly, quelques secondes, elles sont sorties de la voiture. They left the car. Et la voiture avait pris feu. And the car je ne sais pas si elle s'est en train de se rappeler ça. I don't know if she remembers je donne un autre témoignage. Yeah, I'm give you, I'm give you another testimony again. Nous avons we have notre maman là derrière. Our mother back there. On l'appelle mama. We call her mama. Je crois que tout le monde la voit là derrière, là derrière. I believe that you will see her back there. Tous nous sommes passés par le temps de la Covid. All of us we went through Covid. Mais quand on regarde, But when we look, quand on regarde les jeunes hommes, young people, les jeunes dames, young ladies, qui sont passés women, à cause de, de la COVID, qui sont morts. Away because of COVID. Mais quand je vois maman But la derrière, pour moi c'est un témoignage puissant. For me, it's a 
Et quand on demande aux gens de, de témoigner Dieu, d'adorer Dieu, je ne sais pas si vous réalisez qu ce que ça représente. Quand on dit que Dieu est ton frère, Dieu devient ton frère, il est ton père. Et quand nous demandons de l'adorer, quand je chante, What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. Je sais qu'est-ce que ça représente. Je ne suis pas en train juste de faire une mélodie. Je sais ce que ça représente. Et si je te donne, si je te donne mon témoignage, tu vas croire pourquoi est-ce que je suis en train de chanter cela. Car je sais que les parents ont tout fait. The parents did everything Mais ce n'est qu'après la it's mort de mon père, il y a 17 ans, the, the passing of my father, 70, 70 je me suis years rendu ago, compte qu'il faisait aussi des projets yes, pour amener also, ses enfants aux États-Unis. Mais il ne l'a jamais fait. C'est pour cela que je dis US. que quand on a un Dieu puissant, But quand on te demande de l'adorer, il faut réellement l'adorer. Il ne faut pas voir la mélodie. Don't see il faut voir qu'est-ce que ça représente, qu'est-ce que Dieu a fait pour toi. And see what God has done Je sais que tu as un témoignage. I know you have a Je sais que tu as un témoignage. I know you have a testimony. Mais si tu le prends comme rien du tout, if you take it lightly, Dieu n'est pas content. C'est pour cela que j'aimerais maintenant That's why I would like right juste now. pour quelques secondes. I just want us to sing it for a few seconds. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. Chantons. What a father. What a friend, what a savior he is. What a father, what a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. Est-ce que tu peux acclamer le roi de roi? Alléluia, alléluia. Wow. That's how you clap for the Lord. I wonder if, I don't know, uh, Joe Biden was in here or Felix Chisekedi, if that's how you would clap for him. So we're going to give you again one more chance. Can you clap for the Lord? Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sanctification Ministry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, amen. Yes, at this time, I'm going to invite our beloved pastor, Pastor Joel Samalege. And as he's coming up, if you would welcome him, please. Thank you, Jesus. Alléluia. Alléluia. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Alléluia. Good morning, church. May I invite all the kids to go for Sunday school? Today is a beautiful day, a day that the Lord has given us. Amen. But before I proceed, I'm going to ask this in French. Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui a besoin qu'on traduise pour lui en français? Levez juste la main. Si vous ne comprenez pas l'anglais. Great. So everybody understands. Amen. It's a beautiful day. It's a wonderful day that the Lord has given us to be in his presence. You know? Sometimes I look at people in church, they, have, they look very sad. There's no place where you should feel joyful, no matter what, than to know that you are in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. There's no better place you can be. 
than in the presence of God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless your name and I thank you. Thank you, Father, that we came here to offer you a service of worship. But we also came hungry and willing and longing for spiritual food. And Father, I don't need to be reminded that I'm not wise enough and I'm not worthy to even preach. But I pray, Jehovah, that at this very moment, you will use me to speak to me and to your congregation. Just use me, Father, according to your will, for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we've been talking about something that the devil fights the most. The devil fights your obedience. If there's something the devil does not want is your obedience to God. He will do anything for you to disobey God. And we looked at a few things that hinder us from obeying God. We look at our backgrounds. Sometimes we mix our relationship with Christ with our culture. There's a lot of things in our culture that we don't want to give up. You know, we want to hang on to them because we benefit from them somehow. But we need to review our cultures. We need to look at our background and be very careful what we, we take with us in, into our relationship with God. We talk about brokenness versus entitlement. When you are entitled, you will not obey God because you think you deserve Instead of doing what God is telling you to do, you will think, no, I'm not going to do this unless you do this first because I did this for you. We feel entitled. Amen? Entitled. Last week we talked about self-deception. You can deceive yourself. Especially if you have spiritual gifts and ministry you know that are excellent you know Paul said I prayed to God three times and the Lord said to me my grace is sufficient so that I don't boast because of the excellency of my gift our spiritual gift what we achieve in life what God has given us in life sometimes may deceive us you know because you are so successful in a specific area, you deceive yourself. You think you don't need God. You think you have become a little God yourself and you can replace God. That's self-deception. And those kind of things hinder us from obeying God. Today we are going to talk about the lack of spiritual growth. If you don't grow spiritually, it's going to be very hard for you to obey God. Very difficult. But I want, to, I, want to, I want to entitle it, Never the Same You. Never the Same You. You should never remain the same. See, only God can remain the same because God is perfect. We should always be changing and transforming and becoming better and better and better. You cannot remain the same. And you, we're going to see the benefit of that. Never the same you. And we are going to demonstrate that in scripture. Never the same you. You need to grow. You need to grow. Amen? Amen? You know, in one family, every time there's a new baby, the one that used to be the baby, they say, oh, now you're a big brother, you're a big sister. There's another baby. You should grow to allow the other baby to be a baby. Amen? And so on. In church, it's the same thing. You cannot be here for five years 
and you're still the same as the one who's coming in today. We don't even have time to treat this one like a baby because we still have another baby here who does not want to grow. Amen? We need to grow. Spiritual growth allows you to obey God. When you don't grow spiritually, it becomes difficult. And we're going to read. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read in the book of Mark, but I'm going to read in all four gospels. But I'm going to compare at the end. Okay? Let me preach in Mark first, and then I'll compare at the end. Let's go. On that day, when evening, evening came, he said to them, let us across to the other side. Okay. Amen? Let's go from this side to the other side. Okay? Let's continue. And leaving the crowd, they took him with, with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. Come on. And a great storm of wind arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already filing. Was already filling, sorry. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care if we perish? Mm -hmm. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. Okay? He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even wind and sea obey to him? Okay? So I'm going to give a little few revelations about this. But my biggest point that I want you to see t today is the comparison I'm going to make at the end. Remember the number two. I'm going to talk about two, 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 two. I'm going to compare two people a lot. Two things a lot. Remember that. So Jesus said, let's go from this side to the other side. So there's two sides. This one and the other one. We need to go from here to that side. Amen? And they are in the boat with Christ and they are going to the other side with Christ. Not without Christ, with Christ. But even though they were with Christ, a big storm arose. It's not be because you're a Christian that you're not going to face storms in your life. Storms are going to rise even if Jesus is there. Amen? You know, there's a verse in the book of Revelation that says, there was war in heaven where God is God. <laughs> even in heaven, there was war. It's amazing that spiritual battle happens even where God is. Amen? So they're going from this side to the other side. And a lot of people I know, when you face some storms in your life, the first question you ask yourself is, what did I do wrong? Right? We always think we did something wrong. We did some... No, 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 no. Sometimes the storm arise because you have made a decision to go from this side to the other side. Period. You make a decision to start a business today to increase your finances, you are going to face a storm. Just because you decide to go from this side to this side. Amen? You are going to face... You want to go to college, so you go from high school graduate to college graduate. Because you make that decision, a storm is going to rise it's not going to be easy you know a storm is going to rise but when the storm rises the purpose of the storm is you want to go to that side there's something here that you don't have that will allow you 
to maintain yourself on the other side. So you need to learn that thing. And growth comes with the willing to learn and to apply what you learned. Amen? You are on this side, everything is okay. You want to go to this side, in the middle, you need to learn what is necessary for you to be on this side. Because there's something that you don't know yet. There's something you need to learn that will help you on the other side. So far, so good? You know, I was hoping to come and, and be a preacher in America. So at 16 years old, I began to teach myself English. You know? You are on this side. You want to go that side. In the process, you need to learn English. In the process, you... And that's not easy. Amen? That's not... And believe me, I learned English, went to Zimbabwe. I was like, I'm ready. Got to America. My teacher teach for the first time in class. I heard nothing. Amen? The storm will rise. Not because you did something wrong, but because you decided to go to the other side. Amen? You are single. You live your life. The day you decide to get married, the storm rises. Because you want to go from this side. So far, so good. Two different places. This place and that one. They are different. Very different. We are on earth. One day we are going to go from earth to but for you to make it there, how many storms will arise? Amen? The storm will rise. But look at now two different people on the boat. When the storm is rising, one is sleeping. There's one person that is sleeping. The other one is crying. Hey, I'm going to die. There's a crying baby on that boat. And another one is sleeping. Two different people. Amen? When storm rise, storms rise, do you sleep? Or do you cry? Do you sleep? Or do you cry? They begin to cry. But why is Jesus not crying? Because Jesus is a grown man. Amen? Spiritually grown. He's not agitated. He knows that's not a big deal. But this one is a baby. All these disciples are babies. They begin to cry. Hey, Jesus, we're going to die. Two different people. Facing two different enemies. The first enemy when you are on a boat, your first enemy is the water, right? It's a visible enemy. The water is right here. And then you also have the invisible enemy, the storm that you cannot see, but that is giving so much strength to your physical enemy. Everything you face as a physical dimension and a spiritual dimension. Look at what Jesus does. For the first time he's with there with his disciples. What does he do? He goes for the invisible enemy. And he says, hey, storm. Be still. Amen? Once the storm is over, the water has no more strength. Amen? Everything comes down. Two places, from that side to that side. Two people, one crying, one asleep. <laughs> Two enemies, visible and... What am I trying to say? If you are trying to get married and you are not able to, 
Physically, you say, nobody sees me or I don't see nobody. But spiritually, it's because there is a storm, huh? there is an invisible enemy that you don't see that could be a generational cursor that you don't see, but it's giving strength to what you are seeing physically. And Jesus said, I'm going to go for the invisible first. Boom. There are people in their family. From the good moment you get in final year high school, you become sick. Nobody graduates. So physically what you see is, oh, nobody in our family graduates. But you don't understand that. What you see physically is a force that is invisible. There's a storm huh, that is causing what is happening. All this time you are fine, you are a good student, you go to school, you study, but once you want to get a diploma, suddenly you want to move from this side to the other side. And the storm arises. So far so good? Two, 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 two. Okay? Now, sometimes sleeping at peace is a sign of faith. Amen? Yes, the storm arise, but you are just sleeping peacefully. Why? Because you know the Lord is with you. You know Jesus is with you. Jesus is going with you. He just gave us a testimony here that what God promises, he will fulfill it. No matter what. So keep your faith. Don't be too agitated rest in one place Christians today for one little problem like this they will call a hundred pastors even the devil looks at you and like, this person is agitated they know you are crying they know you are crying like a little baby Grow. Grow. Jesus wants to see you grown. We need to grow. And I'm going to show you later how these people who are screaming here have the possibility to grow. For you to go from this side to the other side, the storm will arise. But the storm, the purpose of the storm is to teach you something that is going to help you on this other side. If you want to be a medical doctor, if you want to be a surgeon, can you imagine from high school to the surgery room? Okay? And they say, okay, you can do heart surgery. From the moment you open, you see blood, you faint. You need a doctor yourself. Amen? Because you are not prepared. You don't have the information you need to deal with this. Amen? So you need to go to school, to medical school, for you to be able to practice tomorrow. But in the middle, from high school to becoming a doctor, there's all kind of storms that you are going to face. There will be days where you, you won't go to bed until 3 a.m. Because you have to do your assignment. All of that is preparing you for the other side. Your attitude, how you behave. Do you behave like a baby? Do you say, oh my goodness me, I'm tired of studying. I'm done. I drop off. Oh, you are going to be like a mature person and say, I need this where I'm going. So I'm going to take it. From one side to the other. From the side of irresponsibility to the side of responsibility. From the side of sinful life to the side of holiness. From this side to that side. There will be a storm that will rise to teach you what it means to be on this side. In ministry, nothing is given for free. That's why we have dead ministries. Go 
God did not call you. You just wake up one morning because your grandfather left you a house. You just change it into a church. From this side to that side, there is a process through which you have to face a storm. A storm on the sea. Not a storm on, the, on dry land, but a storm on the sea so that you face those two enemies because your entire ministry life, this is what you are going to face. That's what you're going to face. From one side to the other side. Now let us look at how they are growing. Okay? I'm going to take two gospels. We read in the gospel of Luke. Uh, Mark, let's read Luke. Let's go to Luke. In Luke they say, one day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. And they set out. And they sailed and as they sailed, he fell asleep and a storm of wind came down on the lake and they were filling with water and were in danger. Let's continue. And they went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves and they ceased and there was calm. So if you look in those two gospels, the account is almost the same okay so it looks like it's the early experience it's the same account the only difference is that in mark they say there were other boats in luke they don't say there were other boats sometimes you face storms that everybody has to see amen sometimes you face storms that everybody has to witness Sometimes people need to see you to see your shame. Amen? Don't worry too much about people. Remember, you have two enemies. The one you see and the one you don't see. Don't fight your brother and your sister here because behind all of that, there's an enemy you don't see. Amen? There's an enemy you don't see. That is orchestrating everything you're going through. In the gospel of Luke, it seems like it was just them. In the gospel of Mark, there were witnesses. Other people were looking as well. They saw it. And they saw how these people cried. Called Jesus. Hey, we are dying. We are not like you. Amen? Amen? And if you live to what they say, they don't say, Jesus, don't you care that we are going to perish and you are not? They include him. This is going to perish us and you. But why are you so calm? That's what we call faith. Amen? So calm. He knows his God. He trusts God. He knows he's just going to say, hey, and the wind will stop. Now let's go into the gospel of John. The Gospel of John and Matthew are different. In the Gospel of, Ma of John, this is what they say. Then they were glad to take him into the boat and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. So these people, they have learned something. This time they go on the lake, but Jesus is not on the boat. Amen? You see the difference? They are alone on the boat and Jesus is coming, walking on the water. Now these people, they don't even realize Jesus is walking on the water. All they remember is that the other time this happened, Jesus was on the boat with us. So what should we do? Jesus, come on the Don't remain a baby. Amen? There are times where when they come to give you something, don't just do that. Learn to take it and put it in your mouth yourself. Amen? You need to grow a little bit. 
They remember, say, hey, you know what, Jesus? Just come in. By the time they tried to take him in, they were already on the other. So Jesus is teaching them something. Me be with you doesn't mean I have to be on the, on the boat. But did you see what I was doing? Nobody saw. I was walking on the water. Didn't you see that? How many times God on this side he said, hey, storm, stop. May on this time he doesn't say storm, stop. What does he try to show them? I'm working on your physical enemy. Do you see that? Hey. There are times where God will destroy the invisible enemy. There are times that God will leave the invisible enemy for him to see how God is glorifying you. But it depends on how you grow. <laughs> hey. You have no idea how many people say to me, Pastor Joe, I don't want to see. They're afraid of seeing demons, right? Hey, I don't want to see you. If you don't want to see spiritually, it means you still want Jesus on the boat, destroying every invisible for you. You're still a baby. Amen? Amen. You are still... In the book of John, God said... Storm, don't worry about that. Whether you are here or not, I'm working. In other words, Jesus is saying, even if the boat breaks, we're going to walk. But they didn't get that. They tried to get Jesus under because that's what I know. Does that make sense? So far, so good? Let's go in the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, which looks similar to the book of John, what does the Bible say? And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Okay? But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out. Oh God, these people don't grow. It's the same scenario. They react the same it's the same old disciples. They don't change. They don't learn. Now, but immediately he spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, have no fear. So this time again they realize Jesus is here with us. <laughs> Let's continue. And Peter answered him, Thank you, Lord. This time, one person sees something different. If it is you, God, bid me to come on to, to come to you on the water. Peter suddenly realized, but isn't Jesus walking on the water? Can you also tell me? Amen. Remember the number two that I told you? In the book of John, we, in the midst of the storm and those two enemies, we have still have two people. We have Jesus walking on the water and we have the disciples terrified on the, on the boat. Two people in the book of John. And this time Jesus does not address the storm. He shows a different, you need to learn all these techniques. Amen? It's very important. But in the gospel of Matthew finally there's three people those who are terrified by the storm one that is walking on the water and another one that is beginning to walk on the water there's three people finally somebody is getting out of that boat somebody is getting out of that baby uh, uh, baby car seat Amen. Somebody's coming out of the boat to do what the Lord is telling him. What the Lord was teaching him. Somebody finally has learned something. You know, it's a tradition 
I'm not sure other parts of Africa, but I know in Congo, when we go, we get in December, every church has to tell you what 2023 is going to be. Oh, this is a year of recuperation. Oh, this is a year of my elevation. Oh, this is a year. And then it's been five years they've been telling you, recuperate, you never did. Let me tell you what is going to make 2023 a better year for you. It's not that we say, oh, it's a year of elevation. That's not it. What is going to make that year a better year is because you are going to change. They are facing the same scenario, but at least in the book of Matthew, it's a different Peter. Never the same you. In 2023, we are going to face enemies, just like in 2022. The difference is going to be, you are going to learn everything you need in 2022 to cross to 2023. The same fight will fight you. You, you experience the same enemies, but they are not going to experience the same you. Does that make sense? I'm kind of... Let me give you an example of my life. When I was a little boy, I would have nightmares every night. And when I woke up, I would see those evil spirits in my room. As a matter of fact, my brother Jimmy just reminded me the other day, he said, you know what, you need to write a book about what was happening at you at night. Because most of the time you scream at night, I will look at you, you're looking in that corner, I can see you are seeing something. But when I look, I don't see anything. It was a struggle. I was in nightmares over and over and over. Until when I went to Sunday school, like those kids. I was 11 years old. I went to Sunday school and my pastor, Pastor Charles, he taught me. He said, God listens to the prayers of children. I just learned one thing from church. If two weeks later, there was this storm at night. I could not sleep. The devil was all over me. I remember all I said was, they taught me, you hear the prayers of kids. Can you deliver me? God. And that night, I saw a spirit coming out of my body. I was freed from nightmares. But I did not stop there. I said to, oh, I said to myself, so in the name of Jesus, they run away. I sat on my bed. I was 11 years old. I said, devil, you've been my nightmares for 11 years. I'm going to be your nightmare for the rest of my life. Ah, you need to grow. You need to grow. What do you see Jesus do? Can you see what he's doing? Peter saw it. When everybody was terrified, he saw Jesus walking on the you know, you can see Jesus walk on the water, but, it, but you don't see it actually. It's happening before you, but you don't realize it because you are afraid. Grow. Let 2023 face a different you. Let the month of September face a different you because of what you learned in August. Let October be different because you are different. You are the one that is going to change. How can you listen to me? I was a baby. There are people that they prophesy to them. Oh, your life is not good because of your aunt is a witch. How can you let your aunt be a witch for 20 years? It means you are not changing. Amen? So every year the witch come they still find you on the body. Let them come another day and see you come of your bed and say, I'm coming to you. Amen. Oh, if my life is not good in my family, there's so much witchcraft. There are people whose parents have never been to church. 
whose parents have never confessed Jesus Christ. But those people today are pastors. Because God is bigger than witchcraft. God is bigger than anything you can imagine. You need to grow. Your life is not good because of you. You don't want to grow. At the beginning, I may say, yes, they had impacted your life in a negative way. But when you come to Christ, you begin to grow. And once you grow, some of the things begin to run away from you. Amen? Amen. Grow spiritually. Grow spiritually. There's two enemies. The visible, the invisible. There's two levels of excellency. You can excel in the physical, but it's better to excel also in the spiritual. To excel in the spiritual. Because there are days where you need to address the invisible. There are days that you need to address the, the visible. Not every fight you need to fight. Oh, they say this about me. Just rest in peace. Let the water agitate. Destroy the storm. There will be another day you leave, you leave the storm alone and you address the water. Amen. There will be a day where you walk on the water. That day will come. That day will come. If people are laughing at you right now, rest in peace. On the boat. Tackle the spiritual. Tomorrow, when the spiritual begins to fear you, the physical, the visible now, begins to praise you because you're walking on it like this. Amen? You need to grow spiritually. If you don't grow, it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. Now let me give you this last revelation. Peter never learned to rebuke the invisible. I want you to understand this. He never learned to rebuke the invisible. When Jesus rebuked the invisible, he never said to Jesus, can you also tell me to calm the storm. He never learned that. See, that's the problem of jumping. He, he was just impressed with what he could see. I want to walk on the water too. Now he's walking on the water. The storm he never learned to address comes back and says, hey Peter, I'm here. Do you see that? Learn everything. Step by he never learned to rebuke the storm. Now the storm is coming. What happened to Peter? He begins to, to drown. <laughs> Learn everything and grow. I'm going to recapitulate everything. Two, 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 two. Number one, two different places. From this side to the other side. In between storms. Those storms that rise, they come and empower the water. The visible enemy. Because before the storm, there was no water on the boat. But because of the storm, the wave brings a lot of water into the boat. The invisible enemy is giving strength to the physical enemy. Address the invisible first. Amen? Two kind of people on the boat. One that is crying, the other one is sleeping at peace. Later on, it's a different scenario. It's the same enemy, but this time Jesus did not go on the boat. What do we see? Two people. One that is walking on the, the water and the other one who is terrified on the boat. Hey. He don't even realize that he does not address the storm. He's walking on the visible problem. And finally, in the book of Matthew, we have three, three people. One that is terrified, one that is walking on the water, 
and another one that has just learned to walk on the water. Unfortunately for him, he never learned to address. Did you understand all of that? If you don't grow, even if Jesus said, come on the water, you will not go. You need to grow. It's very difficult to obey God when you are a child. How many times do you tell your little kids not to do something? They do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because they are kids. Because they don't grow. But once they begin to grow, you will see for yourself. When you say, eh, they understand. Amen? They begin to learn to obey. As they grow, we need to grow to obey God. So far, so good. So far, so good. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But obedience to God starts with somebody making the decision to follow God. Amen. So next week, it's a beautiful week for us. Because we are going to baptize people. It's quite a, it's quite a big group of them. Okay. May I invite all of those who are going to be baptized to come forward? Please, please come forward. Come on. Don't be, don't be ashamed. Come on, come on. There's no shame. This is the beginning of it. It goes from here from deciding to give come on come on in front like this from deciding to give your life to Christ to walking on the water one day amen it starts with you giving your life to Jesus Christ and for you to have the the humility to learn and to apply what you learn you have to be willing to change. If you remain a baby, you're going to remain on that boat. Amen? My prayer is that one day you're going to say, Jesus, in your name, I'm going to walk on the water. But this is the beginning of the journey. Amen? To make a decision to follow Christ. Okay? May we show God that we are happy that these people are going to be baptized. Come on! Thank you very much. On Saturday at 10 a.m., check our church chat. For we're gonna go to Essex. Uh, we just somebody's gonna go check that everything is fine. Unless there's something wrong, then we're gonna change where we're gonna do it. But we're gonna do it at Essex, uh, Maryland, at the beach, and we are going to baptize them on next Saturday at 10 a.m. Amen. But then this also leads us to something special. Two and a half years ago, when we started years now over three years right but I think it was a little later when I was praying to God and I think I told you God gave me a list of people so there's a long list the list is in on my computer some of the people God who said this one you work with this one you do this two and a half weeks ago or three weeks ago, it was a Monday evening, we were praying to God. And the Lord finally said, He gave me three names. You need to anoint these people. And when I looked, I said, yes, Lord. About a year from now, we're not going to anoint them now. About a year from now, those people are going to be anointed. Finally, in our church, we are going to have our first ever deacon. Amen? Our first ever 
I know you are anxious to know who that person is. The word deacon in Greek is daikona, which means service. Okay? Of course, they're going to go through leadership teaching. So probably by next convention, we're going to have our, our first anointing ceremony. And our first deacon is going to be none other than our brother Bertrand. Come here. sanctification ministry that serves like this young man. Always comes to church first and leaves last all the time. You are sitting comfortably. You don't know who put all this together. Every Sunday, every Thursday, taught me I was like with pleasure God it's an honor I'm gonna train him and we are going to anoint him our first ever so can you imagine if sanctification ministry grows big 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 you're gonna remain in the history of this church as the first ever deacon for God's glory you're just gonna make history my brother God bless you stay here with me next in every church we should have all ministries pastoral ministry ministry of teaching doctors prophetic ministry apostolic ministry and evangelic ministry evangelism God gave me two more names God is still talking. So don't think, oh my God. If so and so become ministers, then I'm not going to be one. God keeps talking. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because sometimes we are jealous. Uh -uh. If you are jealous, you are still on the boat. You're still a baby. These women... I did not see them. God saw them. And God gave me their names. I'm going to invite Mama Zoel Kanda. Mama Zoel Kanda. in evangelism and prayer ministry for sure and the first ever prophetess of sanctification ministry that we are going to anoint Mama Mireille Mama Mireille boy come baptism and one day you become a minister. Amen. It starts with baptism. You see the spiritual growth? Uh-huh. I'm so blessed to have you. So blessed to have you. I mean, have everybody. But in, in a way, the Lord saw you also because of everything you have done. Let me say this to you. We can give you a title because we know you but we can never give you a ministry ministry is born out of work and pain 
The reason why I'm so glad, I'm not the one who called you ministers. The Lord did. I was not the one. Our next convention is going to be exciting. Maybe the Lord is going to reveal that you are going to join the group. God knows. I don't know. But continue to grow. Continue to serve. And one day you are going to be a minister in this church. I'm going to explain more another time. But today just see these people. I'm glad to see Papa Monga here. Papa Monga was an elder in my church where I was growing. I learned a lot from this man. And today, he sees me a pastor. You know, he sees me the little boy, now a pastor. Growth. Amen. So Papa Monga, this is going to be your first leadership class that you are going to teach in sanctification ministry. We are going to organize that for God's glory. Amen. Gloria. Your turn is coming. Amen. Continue to grow. Continue to learn. And continue to change. Never the same. It looks like you are not even happy. Never the same. When I met this young man in 2016, I didn't know he was going to be the first deacon of my church. <laughs> Never the same you, my brother. Every day you grow, every day you change. Never the same you. Now I want everybody to stand and clap for the Lord huh? as we approve what the Lord has revealed. Huh? As we approve huh? what the Lord has done in the name of Jesus. première fois. Thank you, Jesus. I have another microphone? Oh, this one right here. Kevin, come with me. Come on. You are going to be a pastor. Come here. One day we are going to anoint this young man a pastor. I'm going to invite Papa Monga to pray. And pray for these beautiful people that the Lord has called to serve God in this minute, in this church. In Jesus' name. Eternal notre Dieu, nous bénissons la grandeur et la puissance de ton nom. Parce que tu nous aimes, Seigneur. Et ce matin, T'as plus d'associer notre frère et les deux mamans dans ses services. C'est pour nous une grâce, un privilège d'être au service du Dieu Tout-Puissant. Les hommes, nous les servons, mais les hommes déçoivent. Mais Dieu, Dieu, c'est lui qui ne déçoit jamais. Amen. Nous bénissons ton ce nom, notre Dieu, parce qu'il y a une promesse derrière les services. Ta parole nous dit. Que tu honores ceux qui te servent. Accorde la grâce à ses frères, à ses mamans de te servir pour qu'un jour tu puisses les honorer. Pas seulement si c'est terre des hommes, mais avec cette couronne incorruptible. Merci Seigneur de les aider à marcher dans ta parole. Merci Seigneur de les aider à ne plus être les mêmes. Nous voulons que ces personnes changent réellement et que par leur témoignage perdre des grâces de bonté qui en est encore plusieurs dans cette paroisse glorifie-toi glorifie-toi Père au travers 
de ce travail qui va être fait. Ce travail ne sera pas fait pour les pasteurs, mais ce travail sera fait pour toi, Seigneur. Accorde la force. Accorde ton esprit est dans notre Dieu. Parce que sans le Saint-Esprit, il sera difficile d'accomplir les tâches que tu attends de toi. Merci pour ton amour et pour ta fidélité. C'est réellement un privilège pour eux d'être associés à cette œuvre, Seigneur. Glorifie-toi. Que toute la gloire te revienne dans tout ce qui va être fait, Seigneur. Ce ne sont pas des titres comme les titres dans ce monde. Mais notre Dieu, c'est des tâches pour te servir. Pour ton or éternel, notre Dieu. Que celle ton nom soit élevé. Que ton, seul ton nom soit glorifié au travers du travail qu'elles vont accomplir, qu'il va accomplir. Nous bénissons ton Saint-Nom. Nous t'honorons notre Dieu parce que ce n'est qu'un départ éternel, notre Dieu. Et les voyages de mille pas commencent par un pas. Il vient de commencer maintenant. Et nous voulons véritablement, notre Dieu, que cette église puisse avoir la liste complète éternel, notre Dieu, de tous les mystères. Il y en a encore d'autres. Suscite encore des dons éternels notre Dieu Appelle encore d'autres éternels notre Dieu à se joindre à ces groupes Et que ces groupes aillent de la fin Merci notre Dieu pour ton amour et pour ta fidélité Nous te bénissons Père parce que Tu agis et tu agiras toujours éternel Nous aimerions perdre des grâces lorsque nous reviendrons ici Que nous puissions voir réellement que notre Dieu t'y agit tu n'agis pas avec les arbres, mais tu vas agir avec ces personnes que tu mets à côté de ton serviteur, le pasteur Dieu. Que toute la gloire te vienne, Seigneur. Bénis les mamans, bénis notre frère et permets réellement qu'ils te servent. Et que les services qu'ils vont faire pour toi puissent honorer ton Seigneur. Nous bénissons ton Seigneur parce que nous te faisons confiance et nous croyons que ce n'est pas par hasard que tu les as appelés. C'est parce que réellement tu as un plan merveilleux à accomplir avec eux. Gloire, honneur, louange te soit rendu notre Dieu. Et c'est dans le nom merveilleux et précieux de Jésus-Christ, notre Seigneur et notre Sauveur, pour qui elles vont travailler, pour qui il va travailler, que nous venons ainsi de prier. Amen. Amen. to God and if you look up you see other ways of giving in Jesus name
Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for the opportunity you have given us to worship you with our offering and tithing. We pray, Father, that you bless this. And you remember, my brother, my sister, and I. And allow us to come again and offer to you. And offer to you joyfully. So bless every hand. And provide for every hand that did not show up. So that all of us can have that opportunity to come and worship you with our offering. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to start with Papa Mong. I've already introduced him. He was an elder in my church where I grew up. Okay? And he impacted us in many ways, you know. Uh, he's been a great leader of my church. And I'm so blessed to see him here because we were in the Methodist church. We were, we were sharing a church, the same building, two different churches, right? And, and this man of God came and revolutionized the church. It was a revolution. He said, we need to build our own building. And today that building exists. So thank you very much, Papa Monga. Could you please stand? A man of courage, a man of perseverance. Every time I see that building, I remember him. He was pushing and pushing and pushing. With Papa Monga, you would not say, oh, I don't have money, I'm a student. Okay, if you don't have money, you're a student, come and get some bricks. You're going to build that church. Amen? He took all of us, we worked for that building. Amen? So, it was a wonderful man of God. If anybody else is here for the first time, this is your first time to come to this church, could you please stand? We want to welcome you. Come on. Feel free. Amen. Come on. If you have visitors in your house, that's how you welcome them. Ah, okay. Jesus. Now, maybe what you did not know is that Papa Monga is actually the father of these two young men here. Dan and God. Okay? So you know God, you know Dan. This is Daddy. Amen? And you are so blessed to, be, to have been raised in a house of prayer, in a house where the father, the mother know Jesus Christ and they raised you in a Christian family. And I pray that all of us here are going to raise our kids the Christian way. This is Sanctification Ministry. We have our services on Sundays at 11 and we have prayer ministry on Thursdays at 7 p.m. If you have time, please come join us. We're going to pray and we're going to worship God together. If you don't have a church, you are most welcome. God bless you. May we please have a seat. Thank you very much. I'm going to bless the people of God now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for you have spoken to us. And my prayer, God, is that everything we learn every day is a tool that is helping us to cross to the other side. And Father, every enemy that we have faced in the past may come back but when they come back they will never find the same us for every day we are growing in faith in knowledge in prayer in holiness and in glory so bless us as we go out bless this sunday Bless your people and bless all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. Bless two, three, five people for me and encourage them in Jesus' name.